it's time to go boating. We've just been doing a little bit of a sort out on my mate Nathan's boat. So it's just a little puddle jumper. Running a 2.4 2AZFE Toyota engine. Camry, Estima, Previa. A few other engines will have this 2.4. We've done a little bit of wiring and crammed a whole lot of stuff into a little tiny box. So we've got in here a Link Monsoon G4X. Relays, fuses, there's an OBD2 dongle, and I've got a CAN Lambda in the moment just for testing. We're not quite finished, but we wanted to come down and do a bit of, bit of testing, a bit of checking. We had to change the fuel pump, and that was just a second hand one I had lying around. We went to fire this thing up, wouldn't run, checking fuel flow, the fuel pump would hum, but no flow, no pressure. So we sorted that. I've made a couple of changes with regard to the sensors going in. So this one's got a combined pressure and temperature sensors. Uh, they're a Bosch product. There's a bit of, uh, well, not everyone agrees on how they should be mounted, where they should be fitted. So some people say they should be at a 45 degree angle. Some say that they should, um, shouldn't be mounted to the engine should be remotely fitted so to reduce the chances of premature failure. We've fitted them to the back of the cylinder head in both cases, directly to the engine. Oh, there, there are little adapters, little screw adapters, but there are those, are those sensors there. Time will tell if it's successful. While we were testing it in the workshop, uh, we ran it up and it would idle funny and stall. With a bit more diagnosis, we found that it would misfire on the middle two cylinders. And he actually said that's exactly what it was doing with the old computer. So more investigation, compression tests, checking. And I'll show you this little video I took for when we were actually having the problem. Check this out. Hey Nathan! Oh that's no bloody good is it? There's, um, there's a water leak. Is that like one of my exhaust valves or something that's letting it through? Or? Hey, where's that coming from then? Well, we've got the exhaust, the, that going. It's filling up the exhaust. Bruiser, come here. They're coming out through the top of the piston. And of course, once it, and when it drops down to idle, when it drops down to a low idle, it's putting water back into the cylinders. Yeah, not enough pressure, eh? Not enough pressure. Yeah. So is that just because the hose or could we like that on the water? Look out! Look out! So the problem with that was the water was entering here and was just splashing back up. And for those of you who don't think it was possible, well, we actually we proved it was possible. So we've moved it around just as a temporary sort of fix, put this bit of a riser in, put the water in a bit later, change that around. Um, of course, this is a temporary fix. Up in the gauges department, we've got a Microtech dash. You've seen some of my videos before. The blue boat got one of those. And we've kept that pretty simple. The, the wiring in behind is actually quite nice now compared to what it was. The, the, my mate's in the background sniggering when I made that comment. <laughs> he, he actually had to get under the dash and pull this loom out because we made some changes. And I'd planned it to have the dash in it. Um, and he can pull it in and out easy. Whereas there was a mess before that I removed with my side cutters. So I think it's time to get this thing off the trailer and um, and go boating. I'm, I th yeah, I think that's the, the way to go. Yeah. Actually, other cool things that we added, um, fuel filters. Last person didn't think fuel filters were necessary, but we thought that's a good idea. Are we going boating? Good. Yeah. We can go boating. I'm gonna put my clothes on. It's, bloody, it's pretty cold down here, eh? In your shorts. <laughs> oh, thanks. I'm just soft. Yeah. Oh.
Uh, the water's got to be, got to be fucking leaking in here, man. It has to be. So look at Take over. Have a look. Look where it's coming out. That's gotta have been leaking the whole time. Right? That's gotta have been leaking the whole time. And that's why we couldn't get up the tent. It physically goes alright though. So we're 5,800 RPM here, that was on the ramp, but down the river we were like 5.1 and I lost RPM on that last run, but we had a leaking exhaust and stuff, but it, it, between the two runs, or the three runs we did, it was best on this, the middle one, 91% um, on the injectors, so we're using nearly all of them. So we've got a lot of load, and that's the thing with jet boats is you've got a heap of load on them. You've got a heap of load all the time. It doesn't, and when you back off, no, no, when you, like when you get to cruise speed, you've still got a heap of load, a lot more load than a car. Um, air temp today, the maximum air temp, even just sitting in running like this, was thirty degrees. And that throttle body, where we've got that sensor, where we've got that sensor directly into the throttle body, it's on a plastic intake manifold. So we're still getting a fair bit of hot air from under that bonnet in that air, in that engine area, aren't we? Uh, 92 degrees on the coolant temp sensor. We run it for 40, for, oh, we run it for 65 minutes. We've actually had a 15.2 volts. I wouldn't want any more than that. But I'm not sure where that was because this may have included that last run where it was before we took the alternator off. That may have been included. I didn't clear statistics this morning. Oh, okay. I'll clear those statistics so we can have a look at it next time. I'll pull out some logs. We'll have a look at some logs because I think we've got good oil pressure. Yeah, we do. Because it started off cold, it was about 48. I don't know what it was running at idle. We'll have a look at that too. It doesn't seem to pull us too bad. The boat actually seems to perform okay. Yeah. 